Professor Aung Thun Thet, thank you very much for coming this morning, giving us your precious time to be on our program. It's an honor. So first of all, could I ask you to introduce yourself to us? I'm Aung Thun Thet. Uh, I'm a member of the Independent Commission of Inquiry on Rakhine. So the main question I would like to ask you is about the, your role in the uh, Independent Commission of Inquiry. Perhaps you can elaborate on that. I think what is important for the audience to understand uh, the, the four words itself, each of them uh, has uh, meaning, uh, each of them has certain connotations. And I think the most important is the I, which is independent. So as you know, uh, since August 25th of 2017, uh, because of the incidents in Northern Rakhine, because of the atrocities, uh, alleged allegations of human rights abuses, the chair of ICOE is Ambassador Manalu. She's from Philippines, a very distinguished human rights lawyer. So she's still working uh, for the rights of the woman. Uh, and uh, she's supported by the vice chair, which is Ambassador Oshima. He's also a very distinguished uh, Japanese diplomat. He's an Under Secretary General uh, working in the UN and also the permanent representative to the UN itself. And then we have two national members, uh, Unyate, uh, who used to be the uh, head of the Constitutional Court. So he, again, a very le uh, distinguished legal expert, and myself. So we have, a, uh, we have four members, uh, two international and two local or nationals. So the task of IUE from the very beginning was twofold. To look at the uh, issues surrounding uh, the so-called allegations uh, that stem from August 25th incidents, and then to identify accountabilities. Uh, but more importantly, it's not just the accountability itself, but also how can the commission, our commission, give recommendations for sustainable peace and development in Rakhine. So uh, I think we need to frame the ICOE within the larger context, because the international community has, as you know, have established independent fact-finding missions. Uh, the Human Rights Commission, the Human Rights Watch also have done uh, many investigations. So the added value of our commission, ICOE, from the very outset, uh, we want to ensure that whatever we do is evidence-based. It is based on facts. As soon as ICOE was established, we had a call for submissions. So anyone who is aware of so-called abuses could be able to uh, let us know exactly what happened, you know, when it happened, and what is the crime, etc. So uh, through this, we've been doing investigations. So we have set up what is called the Evidence Collection and Verification Team, ECVT, uh, which is made up of professionals. And therefore, we, are, we have been collecting and we are still collecting evidence. Now, the one of the advantages of ICOE is because it is based in Myanmar, uh, we have access to the Tamador. So we have met the Commander-in-Chief, we have met the Vice Commander-in-Chief, we have met the senior officials at the Tamador. We've explained to them uh, the needs of the, the ICOE. Uh, we have asked for evidence, we have asked for photographic evidence, we have asked for video evidence. So whatever evidence the Tamador has, we've also met the police uh, Chief of Police. We also met the Minister of Home Affairs, who is in charge of uh, the police uh, establishment. So the question is, we do now have a huge body of uh, evidence, uh, which we call secondary uh, information. But we are also collecting primary uh, data. So we have sent our teams to Northern Rakhine. Uh, we've met people in the villages, all that are affected, uh, the Rakhine, ethnic people, the Bengalis, the Muslims. Uh, we have collected, and uh, recently uh, ICOE, we were in Dhaka to discuss with the Bangladeshi government the possibility of us sending the ECVT, the Evidence Collection Verification Team, to Cox's Bazaar. ICOE has been established for more than a year. So within that year, what has been your biggest challenge? I think the expectations. You know, the expectations vary uh, from where you are sitting. You know, the international community from the very outset claimed 
that ICUE is not an independent. So from, from the very beginning, uh, we've been seen as uh, just being a official mouthpiece. So that, that's the kind of challenge we have. Uh, at the same time, uh, there would be concerns internally of what we will find. So there's always the tension, and I think what we call the create tension between uh, what the international community expects and what the local communities, the national community. But we've been made very clear we will for adopt the best practices of uh, other investigation commissions uh, that was established all over the world. Would you be able to, to say at this point as to what your greatest achievement uh, working on ICOE? The greatest achievement, I think, to, to me, which is distinct from other investigations, uh, we have access to the Tamadol, we have access to the uh, police and security forces. So this is an asset because this, this is something that other commissions, you know, for obvious reasons, uh, do not have access to. But uh, it's not enough to have access. Uh, we, we really have to ensure that the information that is provided to us is credible. So is there a timeline to show all of that? Like, yes. for example, is there going to be a press conference to, uh, to establish? Uh, all your findings? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, the, our initial mandate uh, was one year, uh, which uh, completed in August. So we, we had requested for extension, and we should be finishing, or we're trying to make sure that we should finish by the end of this year. We'll still need to visit Cox's Bazaar. You know, I've been there th now three times, so, you know, so, but uh, we, we should need to send, or we need to send the ICVT, our investigation team to collect evidence in Cox's Bazaar to meet the people who had, uh, you know, uh, who had, who stayed in Mount Dora. Is that challenging? Because is it impossible for you to to do that? What I don't think it's challenging. The, the the question is, you know, because of the as you know, uh, recently August twenty fifth, two thousand nineteen, um, it's a, it's a second year, yes. you know, since the incident. So there is a bit of tension within the camps. And we heard that the security issues are of concern in the camps, and therefore we had seek advice uh, from the Bangladeshi government. You know what will be the most appropriate time for us to. We are ready to go any any time. Uh, we have already prepared ourselves. We know, you know the questions. They know that the uh, the time of your of this commission is going to run out of time mm -hmm. by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So. Is, is that a problem? If, for example, you cannot visit Cox Bazaar before this time is up, you may need another extension, wouldn't no. you? Uh, what we, we thought was, the, uh, so far, the evidence we've collected would be sufficient for us to, to prepare. The reason why we wanted to visit Cox's Bazaar is to have you know, what is happening out there. Is there any teaser you can give our audience with regard to what is going to be in the book, in the report? Because it's rather premature, yes. uh, the only thing we can say is that uh, we have evidence which, uh, for reasons that I've explained to you, which other commissions, other uh, investigators have not found, mm -hmm. uh, because we are based here in our country and we have access to full information. Do you think narratives and opinions are one-sided? This is a challenge. So. I do hope through these series of interviews uh, we can have an alternative narrative because so far uh, the narrative is one-sided. So I think the challenge, and I really welcome this dialogue with you, the conversation, because I think it's important uh, for the audience, especially the external audience, to understand that. I would like to say that we're looking forward to the report of ICOE. I'm looking forward to Beyond ICOE so that once the report is published, the international community uh, would be, to some extent, I would not say 100%, uh, to, to be assured that we have done our very best, that we have tried to be very balanced, uh, we have tried to be very fair, uh, we have tried to be very consistent. Professor Aung Thun Thet, thank you very much for your time, for your patience in coming on to this interview. Thank you. Thank you too.